Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here again with Droid Life. So, big day today in Android. There's your hint right there. Android P is officially stable, out of preview, out of beta, and has a name. Android P stands for Android Pi. Now, that's Pi as in P-I-E, not P-I. And, of course, that makes sense because Google announces desserts or names versions of Android after desserts. We've had Marshmallow and Nougat and Oreo and Kit Kat and Lollipop and all that stuff. You guys know that. So, P-I-E makes a lot of sense. No one guessed it. It's kind of boring. Whatever. Whatever. It's official. If you have a Pixel, Pixel 2, even an essential phone, you can get this right now. Uh, you guys know we've covered everything from preview 1 through preview 5, but uh, since it's stable, we, we want to do a recap to catch everyone up. Also, for those of you who just haven't been paying attention, let you know what's new in Android Pie. So let's do this. This is what's new in Android Pie. So what is new? Well, uh, I've got the I've got it running here on my Pixel 2 XL. And again, you can if you have a Pixel, Pixel XL, Pixel 2, Pixel 2 XL, or the essential phone, you can run Android Pie stable, Android 9.0 right now. The stablest version yet, uh, the official release, all of that, you can run on any of those phones. So there's five phones currently you can do that on. I'm sure OnePlus will join shortly with another beta maybe. We may see it on the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2S or whatever, some of these other phones, maybe Sony will get in there. But either way, today, Pixel, Pixel 2, or essential phone, you can run Android Pie. So in order to do that, you've got a couple of options. You can flash those factory images and we've got instructions for you in the links down below and that'll get you up here. Uh, you should be able to just grab the update over the air on your essential phone and you, you probably will be able to on your Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL as well. And in order to do that, you would just go into settings and scroll down to system and then hit advanced and then find system update down here and just tap on that and then check for update and you should have an update today. And, I, and I'm talking to everyone. You don't have to be enrolled in the beta or anything like that as far as I know. So go ahead and do that and, and see if you've got the update right now. Now, after you've gone ahead and pulled that update, let, let's talk about some of the things you might see. Well, first of all, if we go back to the lock screen, if you own a Pixel or a Pixel 2, uh, actually, I think it's just Pixel 2, but you've got always on display and you'll see some changes in here. Obviously, you have the clock and your notifications still show up, but you now get weather in there as well. And we believe this is just Google pulling information from your, your clock up top there that has date and weather because that's it's basically the exact same layout. There's mirroring it down here, but you do get weather there. So now you don't have to jump past your lock screen in order to get weather info. Uh, from there, though, there's actually some pretty big changes in here. You'll notice down here I have this single button instead of back and app switcher. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, if you pull down notification shade, things look different up here as well. They may look different in your app drawer. They're certainly going to look different in this app switcher screen. All this stuff has changed. Uh, so let's dive into how we get there. And, and I kind of think we should start with this button. So in Android Pie, Google has given you the option to change to a new version of navigation, which is gesture-based. So you swipe up to get into things. It's still a home button, but you can swipe to the right and it'll get you into this, this UI where you can jump between the different apps that you have open. So it changes the look of the app switcher. Um, you can also just swipe to the right once and it'll jump you back and forth between your two most recent apps. And you do still have a back button, which is kind of weird, but you do have one for now. So if you want to just go back, you can just tap on that still. And again, this is a home button. You can also long press it to jump into Google Assistant like always. So it's changed because there's a swipe and a swipe this way, not a swipe that way. You still have a back button. Uh, when you get the update, you may not have that enabled out of the box. So if you want to play with that gesture navigation, jump into settings, down into system, in into gestures, go into gestures, and you want to look for swipe up on home button. I don't know why they're calling it swipe up on home button. I mean, I know that's what you do, but either way, you just toggle that on. If you don't have it on, you go back to the traditional back home app switcher buttons. Um, but if we toggle that on, this is what you get. So from there, again, we'll, we'll just kind of walk through how this works. You open an app and then you can tap on it. It'll take you back home. If you swipe up, it gets you into your app switcher. And so you'll notice that's a swipe up. And, and, and normally that would get you into your app drawer. So how do you get in your app drawer? Well, you swipe and keep swiping and then that gets you into your app drawer. So things have changed there. Or you can swipe up into this UI and then swipe again and then that will get you into your app drawer as well. And again, you hit back to go back. You can scroll between apps like this. Uh, if you want one to go away like Twitter, you just swipe it up and that dismisses it. Uh, there's some additional options in here as well. If you scroll all the way over, there is a clear all button to clear everything. If you come over here and tap on this little icon for the app up at the top, you get some more options like an app info. If you want to get directly into the app, app info in terms of system settings, or this will also launch you into split screen mode. So this is actually how you go into split screen. 
previously used to do some long pressing here and there, but this is how you do it now. So I've got two apps running. You can see there, I can just hit home. That'll get me out. Swipe that away hit home to go back home. That's kind of the basics. Uh, again, there's this swipe over here where you grab the button and swipe to the right and it jumps you back in between your two most recent apps just over and over again. Or you can swipe and hold and then that gets you into this UI where again, you scroll left to right and you can go app by app. If you have a whole bunch of apps, this is actually pretty handy to get all the way to one end or the other. So that's the new navigation setup. There's that back button again. So decide if you want to enable that or not. If you don't want to, I totally get it, but it is there in case you want to play with a new version of gesture navigations over that traditional setup. Also in the future, this is probably gonna be what Google uses going forward. So you're probably gonna to have to adopt it at one point or another. Before we fully move on from navigation gestures though, I did wanna show you one thing where you swipe up and let's say there's some text in one of these cards you may want to select or copy to take to another app. Say you wanna copy something from one, like say your email to something else. Well, in this preview, if there's text showing, you can actually long press and that will bring up your little text thing. And so I can search for stuff, copy, share, whatever you want. I could copy, then I could swipe over here and go up here and search and paste, and there you go. So you can copy from one card to the next, which is actually kind of a handy little feature. All right, so anyways, out of there. Oh, what, oh sorry, one other thing. If I swipe up in here and you do own a Pixel phone, down here you get your five uh, sort of suggested apps. They could be your most recent. They're also just suggestions that Google's looking they're looking at your usage and saying, well, you might want to use these apps. So rather than having to go all the way into your app drawer, they're trying to display you with five apps that you may want to use. Okay, anyways, now we're really getting out of the gesture stuff. Uh, in terms of other UI changes, the notification panel up here is gonna look a lot different than it does for you on Android Oreo. So if we swipe this down, you'll notice mine's black. So I'm actually gonna go in and uh, manually change it to a lighter theme. And yes, there is theme support now. So if I go into settings, display, advance, and scroll down to device theme, you'll notice there are a couple of options. I can do automatic, which changes to light or dark theme depending on my wallpaper, which has been in Pixel phones for a while, Oreo had that. Now with Android Pie, you can manually force it to light or dark. So you don't have to rely on your wallpaper to do that. So I'm gonna go back to light and you'll notice now if I swipe down, this is light. So things have changed. We've, we've got bigger icons, more spacing everywhere. This looks slightly different. It all mostly works the exact same way. If I want to turn Wi-Fi on, I tap it and tap it to turn it back off. If I want to get into more Wi-Fi settings, it just long press on it. it, takes me in here. The same thing works for battery saver. Go in there, it takes me into battery settings or I can turn it off and on. Same thing, do not disturb mode. I can long press and get into more do not disturb modes, or I can turn do not disturb mode on. So none of it's changed in terms of functionality. It just looks a little bit different. Uh, you'll notice clock has moved over here to the left. Not a huge fan of that. We believe they're doing that because Android is going to adopt notch support. And so they're doing some balancing or something like that there. Um, but when you swipe things kind of move around, you'll notice in the status bar, I've got clock and all my little icons for airplane mode and all that along with battery percentage. And then when I swipe down some of those settings drop down into this little area and my dates over here now. And so they've kind of separated some of this stuff. And if I keep swiping down, you just get more options. You can of course still customize all of this, hit the little pencil and drag and drop things around. That's still there. There's your settings icon. So that did actually move. You used to swipe down once and there was a settings shortcut. Now you have to actually swipe down twice, which is not exactly great, but that is how you do it. You do have a brightness slider up here. So for brightness, Android Pie actually has a new brightness where it's still called adaptive brightness, which I believe it's been called in the past, but now it tries to remember what you think about adjusting brightness. So if I go into here, you'll see adaptive brightness. Since your screen brightness will automatically adjust to your environment activities. You can move this slider manually to help adaptive brightness learn your preferences. So it used to adapt based on your environment. Now it tries to do that and also adapt based on where you've set it, depending on like time of day, where you're at, all that sort of thing. So it's learning even more to try to get your brightness right all of the time. Does that make sense? Um, we'll go back and speaking of that, there's also adaptive battery. And so I'm actually gonna go in there and there is a adaptive battery section here. So adaptive battery also like the brightness tries to learn based on your usage. And so it may start restricting apps that it thinks are well, being weird, using stuff. Well, you can see here, it says to expand battery life, adaptive battery limits battery for infrequently used apps. Phone will learn how to use apps over time. So what it's saying is apps that are in the background may be trying to use stuff, but you're not actually using them. 
it may want to limit those so it keeps your battery life lasting longer. And you can see I've got some in here that I don't really need using a bunch of stuff in the background that I will access if I need them to be accessed. And so you can turn those off and on. It'll recommend some apps for you. You can turn this entire feature off if you don't want it doing that. One thing to keep in mind is if it is limiting, you'll see right there, it says notifications may be delayed from these apps. So if it's an app you use frequently or need instant notifications from, you may wanna make sure it's not in this restricted area. From there, let's talk a little bit about screenshots. So screenshots have changed some on Android Pie. You can still do uh, power and volume down and hold those for a second. That'll take a screenshot. Uh, you can also now long press on your power button and there is a screenshot option there. So if you can't, you don't have two fingers to do that, that action there, you can just long press here, tap screenshot and it'll take one for you. Now, once you take a screenshot, you actually have editing tools, which we've never really had before. You used to have to like go into Google Photos and do some editing, but now there's an actual edit button. And when you tap that, it opens this new screenshot editing tool. And that's this is really only available as far as I know for screenshots. But in here, you've got some simple tools. You can adjust, crop, that sort of thing into whatever you want. So you can adjust that stuff on the fly. And then you also have little markup tools in case you want to you know, draw on something. So I can write with this as a pen. I can use this one, which is more of a highlighter. So you've got two different pen options. You've got some undo buttons as well, and you can crop and all of that stuff as well. So you do have some more tools. It doesn't do scrolling screenshots yet, which is unfortunate, but you do have some more tools there. Uh, let's point out uh, auto rotate. So I typically keep my phone not able to auto rotate on its own because it bugs me when your phone auto rotates, you don't want it to, but there are times when you may want to quickly flip to a rotated mode. So let's say I'm in Chrome and I come upon some content that's better viewed in landscape rather than swiping this down, turning auto rotate off or whatever. If I switch this, you'll notice there's a auto rotate button down here now. So if I tap that, it then rotates for me. And my system toggle you can see is still there. So it's sort of like a screen, it's like it, it's a specific or screen specific, I can't say that, auto rotate button. So once I'm done viewing stuff in landscape and I rotate back, that now appears again. And this should do this in almost every app at this point. And it just lets me do it within. It's like a screen lock within certain apps or whatever your current screen is. And again, I never had to play with that system toggle. So kind of a cool little feature there. Um, from there, I, I would like to show you app actions. So in your app drawer, if you have apps that support it, you will get these little icons that appear about your second row down here. Uh, I don't have any showing right now and it could be because I'm on airplane mode, but like if you have a Nest camera, it'll give you a shortcut to your Nest camera. You just tap on that shortcut and it'll open up your Nest camera. It could have a playlist from Spotify or something like that. And you just tap on it, it opens up that playlist directly. It tries to learn what you want and display those app actions depending on like time of day or something like that. Just it, in, in terms of your history. So anyway, they're, they're there, I promise. I just don't have anything to show you at this moment. Let's talk now about sounds for a second. So I'm gonna scroll down here and go into settings and sound. And you'll notice I have four sound sliders now. I have media, call, ring, and alarm. In the past, you had media, ring, and volume, or I'm sorry, alarm. So for Android Pie, they've added a separate call volume. So you can have your own ring volume and a separate call volume. Those used to be essentially one, I believe. Uh, to adjust these, well, you you can go in here and scroll and adjust these to whatever you want. But what you should also know is system level sounds now, and, and, and I'm talking about how the volume rocker adjusts volume. By default, it now adjusts media volume instead of your ring or call volume. So when you adjust your volume with your volume rocker, this is what it adjusts now. So you have to get used to it not doing ringers, but it also makes a lot of sense that it does media. If you want to adjust whether or not your phone rings or vibrates or is in silent, you'll notice there's a little button up here and I tap that. Now it's in silent mode, tap it. Now the ringer's on, tap it again, it goes back to vibrate. This is media, this is your phone, whether it rings with sound or vibrates or just does nothing. Uh, I will point out though, that if there's some other sounds playing, like so I have a ring tone playing now and I adjust volume. Well, you're supposed to have it show up as a second volume slider. So sorry, that took me a second, but now I have two in there and I can adjust. That also works, I believe with Bluetooth headphones or if you just have media playing and maybe you're on a call and you adjust volume, you'll get that separate slider that allows you to adjust two things at once. So volume controls are a little bit awkward at this point, but you just kind of got to get used to them. Once you figure it out, and trust me, they're, they're actually not bad at all. You can also just tap settings here to get into those too. So you don't have to go diving to find them. You can just volume settings, adjust, 
You guys get that? Also, if you press power and volume up at the same time, it calls and notifications turn to vibrate. And if you keep hitting that, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything, but it is a shortcut. So if you're on the ringer and all of a sudden your phone starts making noise and you don't want it to, you can press power and volume up at the same time and it sets you to vibrate. Just handy little tip there. Finally, because most of the other stuff is just little cosmetic things. Like uh, if we go into settings, you'll just notice some of this stuff just looks different in here. Um, a lot of this stuff functionality wise hasn't changed. It's just it just looks different. Everything's a lot lighter and wider and some of the icons have changed and, and, and that's mostly it. But Google is going to introduce a new suite of software called Digital Wellbeing where you can set app timers so that you can only use them for so long. Uh, it'll track your usage of apps to tell you how much YouTube you're watching all the time. You can do this wind down mode where at night it'll go from color to basically black and white to sort of tell you like, look, it's time to unplug. You should go to bed. Uh, and, and, and that's going to be really great. And in fact, because Android Pie is now out, there is a beta for digital well-being. So if you own a Pixel phone, you can install that now. I was hoping to be able to show you this on this video, but my invite from beta has not showed up yet. So we'll have a different video for that. But it's one of those things where Google's trying to get you to unplug a little bit more because we probably all need to. So that's also a part of Android Pie and it's for Pixel users and it's in beta now. We'll have sign up and instructions in the links down below as well. So anyway, it's just been a quick overview of Android Pie. And just to show you that we are running the stablest of stable versions, we'll go in here and go to about phone. And we scroll down here, Pixel 2 XL, Android 9, August 5th, two, August 5th, 2018 security patch. And that's sort of it. They haven't changed the, uh, they haven't changed the Easter egg. It's still the P with the crazy colors. Uh, we don't get a pie shortcut or something like that. But uh, if you guys have comments, questions, let us know. Otherwise, uh, Android Pie, go get it for your Pixel phone or your essential phone, or Droid Life. Peace.